So I don't usually like to look at the answers before I do these problems. I like to show you how I do the problem if I just came across this problem. So I guessed on this title, so we'll see see what happens. But, I, you know, this can't be as easy as the last one. Not that the last one was easy, but we have something different in here. It looks too much like the last problem. So let's see what happens. All right, so it does look like the last problem. Here's the polynomial. We're trying to find the zeros. We're going to start with the possibles. So what's the, what are the factors of p? Well, you're looking at that last term, so plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. What are the factors of q? It's a 1 there, so plus or minus 1. So I don't have a lot of choices here, just four choices, plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. Okay, so let's try 1. I always try 1 first. <laughs> And we're going to synthetically divide to see if it's a zero. We'll know it's a zero if it comes out the remainder zero, like the last part. Bring down the one. So hopefully you're still practicing your synthetic division. If you haven't done one on your own, stop the video and try this one. One times one is one. Seven and one is eight. Eight times one is eight. And I don't have a good feeling about this. Nineteen. Nineteen. 16. Okay, so I'll say no. And after I said like one almost always works, this time it didn't. Let's try negative one and see if we have any better luck. 1, 7, 11, negative 3. Bring down the 1. 1 times negative 1. 6. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. 5. Oh, uh, good feeling about this either. Yeah. Okay, well, that didn't work either, so no. Okay, we only have two other choices, 3 and negative 3. Let's try negative 3. 1, 7, 11, negative 3. You might say, why didn't I try positive 3? Um, because I didn't. <laughs> so bring down the 1. 1 times negative 3. 4. 4 times negative 3. Okay, that's negative 12. I have a good feeling about this. Negative 1, negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. Okay, yay. That is 0. Okay, so we found one. It took a little while, but we found one. I circle it or put a star by it or something because I don't want to forget about it. So we're supposed to be finding all the zeros, and we found one. So it was um, a third-degree polynomial. So that means this is a quadratic polynomial. So we have x squared plus 4x minus 1. And we want to know when does that equal 0. Well, guess what? This doesn't factor. <laughs> so you're either, you either can use a quadratic formula or you could complete the square. So I'm going to complete the square because I think it's easier. But you probably want me to use a quadratic formula. <laughs> okay, if I put the 1 on the other side, and then if I take half of 4 and square it, so what's 4 divided by 2 squared? It's going to be 2 squared, which is 4. Add 4 to both sides. And you get x plus 2 squared equals 5. Take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Bring the 2 over. So maybe you remember solving using the quad or using the completing the square. If you don't, you're going to use the quadratic formula. You're going to have more simplifying to do, but you should get the same answer. Okay, so we found two more zeros. So what are the zeros? Well, there was the one we found with the big circle around it, negative 3. So the zeros are negative 3. And then we have negative 2 plus the square root of 5 and negative 2 minus the square root of 5. So these zeros here, they're not rational, but they're real. They're, they're great little numbers. Um, they're, they're great zeros. But you would have to get like a decimal approximation if you wanted to, um, you know, make it useful, or like you're doing a measurement of something or something. Okay. Um, anyway, those are exact answers, and that's what we want. We don't want the decimal approximations. So those would be the zeros of that polynomial. So really, we found one zero, but then we had to, um, it didn't factor, so we had to use another method for solving a quadratic, but we could have either complete the square or use a quadratic formula and find the other two zeros. Okay, so that was exciting.